the goal is is really to to get to senior executive level people, as you said, understand the language, understand some of the uh, the myths and realities behind what uh, people have been hearing, and perhaps give you enough information to help you build your own internal strategies as you uh, as you recognize the, that it that in order to remain competitive you you immerse yourselves in the BIM world. A little bit of an agenda, and we're going to go through each one of these, talk a little bit about what BIM is, and, and in order to help everybody, uh, we actually made up a BIM checklist, and that's available at our website, but there is a huge debate that rages at any given time on, on what BIM is, so we, we made up a checklist on, that we think is pretty comprehensive, which may be helpful to you. I'll, I'll go through that in a minute talk a little bit about how it works. I'm not going to get down into the weeds on this. I just want to give you some basic understanding of how it works. So as those people that work for you come into your office and say, well, look, we're going to do a massing model and we're going to link it to a database, and you'll have a little bit of an understanding about what they're talking about. Um, we'll talk about uh, the benefits in ROI, give you some of our uh, empirical data from, from uh, clients that we've worked with. And then we'll talk a little bit about implementation, cost, uh, and, and perhaps motivation for you to, to uh, either get started or if you're started to accelerate to take advantage of this lull that we have in the marketplace so you're positioned well to be launched as soon as the, thing, the market turns around. The BIM checklist. Now, when I teach this class, before I go through the BIM checklist, I get all of the students in the class to tell me what they think BIM is. And typically I'll get a pretty, pretty good list, half dozen, dozen um, uh, different ideas of what BIM is, and, and I'll list them all up on there. And then, uh, then we'll open up the BIM checklist and we'll go through it in, uh, in detail to understand BIM is a lot bigger than the eye candy that we're all used to. BIM is much bigger than simply uh, coordination of drawings or coordination of MEP. Uh, those are significant elements of BIM, not to be misunderstood. But this checklist should give you some idea of the depth and breadth, breadth of what true BIM is. As I said earlier, this is available on our website. Um, you can download this. And if you get into a conversation with a client or just an internal conversation and, we're try and you're trying to determine what BIM is and what BIM isn't, pull this out. Look at it. Review it. Uh, we've heard, uh, I've heard so many different descriptions. People call it Big BIM. People call it Big BIM or Little BIM. Uh, there's lots of different uh, insights. We think this is a pretty comprehensive list. How does it work? Well. When you talk about building a model, the first question, that the hurdle that you have to get over, uh, particularly as a CM firm, is what the heck am I doing building a model? Why, why do we have to do that? So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then once you get over that hurdle, you got to get to the next one. It says, well, all right, when do I build this model? Talk a little bit about how the coordination process works. And then there's a big leap. There's a, there's a uh, sort of a a significant leap that you take when you, when you go away from the coordination and the business development stuff. And I'm going to draw a line right there because when you get into this area, when you get into the database, that's how you get into the real 4D and 5D information that, driven by the model. So there's uh, a, a fairly significant groundswell of, of CM firms working in this area. Uh, in the business development and, and the, the, the coordination. People will call it low-hanging fruit or little BIM. Uh, the, the early adopters are now becoming much more active in this area into the true 4D and 5D of BIM. And the difference, you know, when you cross that, that chasm or you make that leap, the difference is right here, the database. We'll talk a little bit more about that. This is an interesting debate on why we should build a model. And a lot of 
our clients initially are resistant to say, well, you know, wait a minute, why can't we just use the architect's model or, you know, why can't we have the architect build the model or can't we just take, you know, do the 2D drawings like we've always done it? There is a, a uh, understanding, understandable reluctance to, to get into the business of, of building information modeling. But when you, when you start to examine it, and as we have been very successful with our clients, we've done over 350 of these models for our clients, they begin to see the benefits and indeed the necessity of having to build a model. And th the biggest difference is what we've come to describe as a design intent model versus a construction intent model. And there's a lot of differences between those two. The design intent model, of course, is what the architect builds if he's building a model at all. That design intent model is uh, to cover exactly what it says, just demonstrate the visual design intent of the project. It's not going to have a significant amount of, uh, of information in it that certainly not, not nowhere close to the information you're going to need to pull off construction data, uh, estimating quantity takeoff or scheduling or coordination, MEP coordination. So that is a, is a really uh, important part of the why build the model. And just as we in the 2D world that we exist in now or still have one foot in, maybe one foot out, we have to learn the project. Just as we would take a set of 2D drawings and pour over them while we're still uh, working on other projects, getting ready for the next project, redline the drawings, building the model is that process in the, in the new 3D world, in the new 5D world indeed, is, is you, that's how you begin to learn the job. That's how your pre-construction team learns the job, whether they're generating the model uh, uh, from another model or they're generating the model from 2D drawings. And, and I, I should at this point say that still as we speak, the majority of contracts out there today for construction projects, the documentation required by the contract is 2D. It's not yet 3D. So that's something that, uh, that is really important, that, that y y we're still, as an industry, not quite over that hurdle. Um, architects, in order to model to a construction intent level, they would have to actually make some means and methods decisions that, uh, for a variety of reasons, they may be reluctant to do. Uh, it, the least of which is their fee probably doesn't cover it. Um, the worst of which is the liability and exposure they may have if they do it wrong. So uh, that's uh, a few reasons. Um, you also own coordination liability as a CM firm. And as you begin to build these construction intent models, it gives you a much greater ability to take that, that leap into the 4D and 5D world much more accurate schedules, realistic schedules, schedules, activity durations with some science behind them, and um, also uh, much more accurate quantities. The final one that I put here, I put it up in bold and red just so everybody pay, pay more attention to it, is this is pre-construction. This is the new pre-construction. Just like you've carved out that niche for yourselves over the years, uh, for pre-construction services, and, and it's been a very, very credible and effective way for you to bring in new projects and new business. Well, BIM is the new tool to enhance and indeed leverage significantly your ability to provide pre-construction services to your clients. So if all else, if, if all of these other reasons don't convince you to get into the modeling business, this one should. This is your turf. This is your territory. This is what you've carved out over the last 20 years and, and actually been able to generate a value-added fee to that part of the service you offer your, your client.